just got off a plane about two hours ago after a 10 hour flight and zero sleep. So if I look jittery, it's because I had 10 coffees in the last two hours. Um, so when messaging becomes your most dominant customer interaction channel, this is something, a big topic that I've been basically working in this space for the last five, six years since I basically was born. And uh, it's a challenge and a question that's on the minds of a lot of large brands in the US that I work with. And now that we set up an office here in Europe, we're actually seeing the same thing as well. Is that companies are trying to figure out, okay, where is this whole messaging that consumers are using evolving to? And I feel that we live in very interesting times. Looking at my own behavior, uh, Alexa, something that's very big in Europe, I walk into my apartment and I ask Alexa to start playing me music. When I'm there, I ask Alexa to call me an Uber. But then I'm the person that opens up my smartphone and sees that my Uber is four minutes away, so I press cancel and I order a new one because I want an Uber in two minutes. So what you would see at the youngest generation these days is that digital is so ingrained in our lives, it's just like, uh, in the old days, when you walked up to a radio and you turned it on, you expected music to come out of it. Well, today we expect internet to be every single place. And it's drastically changing and impacting the way people think, the way people work, and how they look at the world around them. And what's really interesting is that we're becoming hyper impatient, hyper connected, hyper mobile, and our attention span is milliseconds. Uh, research has actually shown that uh, the youngest generations today literally think differently. Their brains are wired differently and faster. And to an older generation, quite often looks as disinterest, but to them, it's just like, already thought about it, don't care what you're saying, I'm on to the next thing. And so, this is a question that comes up with a lot of the brands that I personally work with, um, from the C-level at Uber, Netflix, Dropbox, Western Union, Air Mexico, uh, Delta Airlines. They're all wondering the same question, regardless of what industry it is. All these big B2Cs are sort of wondering, okay, how in the next five, 10 years, will I be able to truly deliver an effortless customer experience, but an effortless customer experience that actually caters to the behavior of the digital consumer rather than what we've known and seen over the last 10 years. And so then you walk into an executive boardroom of let's say JetBlue or some airline, and within five minutes, some C-level exec starts asking a question, so what is the behavior of this millennial consumer that we're talking about? And I always hear this word millennial, millennial, millennial. But we gotta start realizing that the Average millennial today is what, 24, 25 years old. The youngest millennial alive today is 17 years old, the youngest, which means that practically that entire generation has already hit the job market or will pretty soon. And so it's no longer about the millennials. We really got to start wondering what is the behavior of the even younger generation, right? And then I'm talking about the kid that sees their first reflection, not in a mirror, but on an iPhone. There's plenty of videos that you can find on YouTube where this toddler is crawling over to the TV and then starts crying because he starts swiping the TV and the channel won't change, right? You put a magazine in front of them, they start like doing this movement because they want to zoom in on a picture and it doesn't work. And so we got to start thinking as an organizations worldwide, like, okay, how is their behavior influencing ours? Because I don't know who here has a kid that's younger than 17 years old? Quite a lot of you. Who here has at least once a week a phone call with them? Yeah, three, four people, right? So how do you communicate with them? You switch to messaging, you switch to communication channels that they use, not the other way around, right? And so the behavior of young generations is always influencing the behavior of the older generations instead of vice versa, unless when it comes to alcohol. Now, this is the new hanging out with friends, right? They're probably talking with each other right now. And so with that, what's really pertinent is that what's starting to become very important is the ability for brands to deliver effortless digital experiences at scale to a large amount of customers, to a large amount of contacts, and that effortlessness is really becoming a big theme within this type of generation. And research has been done around this. So customers today don't necessarily expect you to do things perfectly. But when things do go wrong, what they see is that it's, if it's a high effort to solve the issue, this loyalty goes up by almost 100%. Negative word of mouth goes up by about 80%. 
even though when it's a low effort experience to solve the problem, even though that there's a problem, this loyalty only goes up by about 10%. So customers today are used to the fact that not everything will always go perfectly, but when it does, it needs to be effortless. So convenience is truly becoming the new loyalty. People are becoming less and less uh, loyal to brands, to specific products, because every single product and service is commoditized every, anyway. It's really about the command of convenience. But if you look at communication convenience, there's a big gap. The way consumers talk with each other today and the way brands still expect you to talk to them. I was trying to do a big bank transaction in, uh, in Belgium about a year ago, and uh, they literally told me that there were two ways of doing it. One, I could go and walk into the branch and make the transaction because it was a certain amount, or I could send them a fax. And so I asked them if a pigeon or smoke signals would work out too, but they didn't think that that was funny. I thought it was hilarious. Um, but so that's still happening today. And it, the truth is that it is not convenient to talk to most brands today. Most B2C brands really make it hard for you. And this is going to become an issue. Uh, I took three random screenshots of airlines because I fly a lot. I have a big passion with flying and with travel. I think it's one of the best inventions humanity has ever done and made. But if you go to a random mobile app of any airline out there and you click on their contact us page, and remember, these are mobile apps that they spend millions and millions of dollars building for the digital first digital consumer who want everything here and now with a mouse click or with a, a tap on the screen. But if you then send them to the contact us page, you give them a list of 50 different phone numbers. You give them a blank web form that goes I don't know where um, and eventually turns into an email conversation. Or even better, like these guys up here, you give on the mobile app that you built, the contact us page is a web form that is not mobile optimized and zoom in is disabled. <laughs> they never get complaints, by the way. So, and then you walk into these meetings, but what never happens is that those executives that you talk to tell you, hey, I want more emails, I want my customers to call our call center more often, right? They don't say that, but if you then show them the contact us page of their mobile app or their website, the first thing you see is their email address or their phone number, right? So this, this is nuts in my opinion, especially when you then look at, and this is outdated, actually it's more than 80 billion now, but like, the majority of all consumer communication is digital messaging today, and it's gonna become a big challenge. Enough data shows that there's a whole migration happening towards the younger generations to use digital messaging channels. And um, I can share, the, I, I believe the presentation is shared because I see a lot of people taking photos, so it's on the mobile app of the event. Um, and so then basically that research that when this came out didn't really show the behavior of this generation, the post-millennial, the generation Z. And so I, I found some other research from Gallup in 2014 and they showed that for 68% of all sub 17 year olds, electronic messaging, digital messaging, WhatsApp, whatever it is, is the main communication channel, the most dominant interaction channel. Now this is research from 2014. In 2014, WhatsApp was bought by Facebook for what, 19-ish billion dollars, and since then their volumes has grown sevenfold. So I'm willing to bet that the 68% is closer to 80 or even 90%, right? And that the other percentages have gone up as well, more towards digital messaging. Research keeps showing it, research keeps showing it everywhere. Nine out of 10 consumers want to talk with brands over messaging. The big analyst firms like Forrester, Gartner, McKinsey, they're saying the same thing. But after a while, you just get tired of slapping people around the face with the same research where, and, and because like that research rarely actually gives you tangible steps of addressing it. It's always like, yeah, consumers want a message. This is a new behavior. Everyone is on messaging, cool. But how is the brand, do you actually start catering to that? What type of steps do you have to put in place to start addressing the problem and to move the contact center, to move the organization into that direction? So I set up a customer advisory board with uh, Western Union, Delta Airlines, Emirates in Dubai, um, Uber's in there as well, and we kind of came up with a step-by-step -step plan. And it's five simple steps towards effortless service. And the first one is a step that everyone is already, or every big B2C is already doing. It's really being where your customers are today. And it started with Twitter and Facebook. Uh, they were the first dominant communication channel that actually enabled consumers to 
sort of circumvene and get around the contact center to not be calling into the IVR, but to just send a message and the brand better respond, right? And so now you can get these really cool use cases. So I fly Delta Airlines a whole lot, and I basically send a Twitter direct message to Delta saying, hey, please cancel my Moscow trip. Because I figured out two days before my flight that I actually needed a visa, and so that didn't work out very well. Um, so I just sent a message like, please cancel my trip. And then the only next message that I had to send was correct, that it's for both passengers, and everything was done. And so the first message was what, at 1.18 p.m., and then my second was at 1.19 p.m., and by 1.22 p.m. in the afternoon, my, my problem was resolved. And these are very cool first use cases, but this is only the beginning. This is only scratching the surface. Because you need to be able to scale beyond that. You need to be able to do more. Because quite often when it gets to payments, when it gets to very private information, modern mobile social media messaging channels don't allow you to do full resolution yet. Um, most companies don't even know who their customers are on digital. And there's some very pertinent stuff, and I can't really name names, but I wish I could. But I was talking to a European bank uh, a few months ago, and they said that whenever we get a message on Twitter from a customer, it takes us about 30 minutes, a little less than 30 minutes, to figure out who that customer is. And they literally went into the bank's CRM system, looked up the first and last name of that customer that matched their, their Twitter profile, and assumed it was one of those based on the location of the customer. Very secure, right? Um, and then I was talking with their, their CIO, and he said that um, everywhere in our customer communication, from letters to the branches, we have posters hanging there that state that our bank will never ask you for your account number. And then you go to their Twitter account or their Facebook account, you start talking to them, and the first response that they get is, can you please send us your account number over DM or over private message? Because they have absolutely no process in place to figure out who the customers are. Um, so that's a big problem that needs to be resolved. Uh, the third step towards effortless service is implementing scale. Because once service becomes effortless through digital, even customers who never really had the need to reach out or never wanted, the problem wasn't ever big enough to actually like want to go on a call and be on hold for half an hour, they will start reaching out as well. And it might just be for a stupid question or in the case of Zappos, asking if they could order them a pizza, uh, which they do. And so, this is a challenge that we have today. Because originally you had phone, email, chat, and SMS, and these are all the dying customer service channels. Then Twitter and Facebook came around, brands started supporting it, but it's really about the wave that's coming next. And this should also include your own mobile application, it should actually include Google search results, everything. Every digital touch point is gonna be a new challenge of how do I create a consistent communication experience. It's no longer about the multi-channel BS, it's really about how do I live in or service in a channel agnostic world. And there's so many different platforms out there that are blowing up internationally. Um, in, in China with WeChat, you can actually pay your rent using the mobile app. You order to use, check up the train system using your mobile app. So everything is digital. Um, but then the real cool thing is when you move along from that. When you really can start shifting towards a messaging first channel, where you can start pushing customers to digital messaging first rather than phones and emails. Um, I'm talking with quite a lot of brands out there that are already looking at their contact us pages and starting to put messaging straight into that, which can create really cool use cases because you're directly into the application, the customer is logged in, you have the GPS locations of the customer, you can do transactions via Apple Pay, transfer money, pay for things, and really create an end-to-end -end digital customer experience straight through the mobile device. And then you might say, okay, but I mean, what if I don't do it, or the market will not evolve as fast, and my competitors aren't really doing it yet, so let, let's wait a little bit. Well, the interesting thing is that this is happening with or without you. The world around us is changing very fast, and even the big players like Google and Apple are going to start forcing messaging as a communication channel on brands. Google announced at the end of last year that they um, did uh, click to message, they set up click to message, which now can be activated by your head of marketing who probably has access to your accounts, where right? Google search results on mobile will have a message button next to them, and they can just send you an SMS. Okay? In Google Maps search results, if they find a branch, maybe of your bank or, or whatever service that you offer, there will be a messages button. Apple just announced a week and a half ago, next to the payments which was mentioned earlier, is that they're now opening up iMessage for B2C communication. So soon, 
on every Apple device. In iMessage, you'll be able to look up a brand and just send them a message. And you better be there and respond or you'll go to the competition. So it's going to get forced on us. And then there's bots and everything. Actually, this slide should have been earlier. It doesn't matter. Um, then when you can do that, then it's really about effortless service. And this is something that I'm very excited about. And there's already a few brands that are creating very cool use cases around effortless service through messaging. And here's the first one. Uh, there's an airline. I can't really mention it, which one it is, but oh, this is opening up. Um, a, a US airline. And they literally found out that the majority of dissatisfied customers in the physical airport are customers who are delayed or were late and missed their flight. And they get pissed off at our people who are there who can't really help them. Well, if we put messaging straight within our mobile application, we know where these free and flyers are an hour before their flight. So let's, 45 minutes before they fly, check where they are. If they're more than a half hour drive away from the airport, well, let's send them a message that we automatically can rebook them to the next one. It'll cost them a $100 change fee, and we already sold the original seat to someone else because we know he's going to miss his flight anyway. So they make more money and create happier customers. And the last use case is uh, for around banking transactions. A big bank here in Europe as well said that the majority of calls they get at night are from customers who are traveling internationally and their card gets blocked. They just flip the card over and call in. So horrible customer experience, I'm sure you've had it as well. Well, that can be tracked. So you swipe your card in Asia, because they swipe it in the US as well, and immediately your phone starts vibrating, hey, we have this transaction, is this you? Yep, that's me, and you can use your card again. So there's really cool, money-saving experience that can be built and at the same time create a better customer experience. And my time is up, sadly, but this is the question I want to leave you guys with. Based on your business, how will you deliver a truly effortless experience in the next five years through digital? Thank you. Thank you.